Well, joining me now to discuss all this is Times Radio broadcaster and author Mariana Frostrup, ITV's political editor and author of The Crash, a thrilling new novel, Robert Peston, and author of The War on the West, Douglas Murray, over in New York. Let me start with you, Douglas, because I've not had the take yet from, from New York. What's the mood there? Because Russell Brand's a big name in America, big Hollywood star, of course, a uh, big media figure there as well. How has this gone down in America? Well, you say he's he's big in America. He he is famous, but uh, he's not a big talent. Uh, his attempt to break Hollywood some years ago was was a flop. Uh, everyone recognizes that, and it's been argued that his more recent trajectory into the sort of fever swamps of conspiracy theory are a sort of result of that. He tried his career in the UK. He came to America to try to do it. It didn't work, and then he became this sort of self appointed guru who most recently could be found on his YouTube channel claiming that the Maui fires were arguably started by black rock lasers, although there was no evidence for that. But there wasn't any evidence not for it either. I mean, this was this was for anyone unfamiliar with it the territory that he had he had got himself into. Uh, so there's enormous interest in it, of course, as there is in all of these media stories. Uh, but it's not the case that he's regarded as any kind of talent. Mariella, I read this report in the Sunday Times. Then I watched the dispatches thing. I think you've got to do that to make any measured judgment about where we are with this. It seemed to me, with my former newspaper editor hat on incredibly well-researched investigative journalism, obviously gone through many layers of fact-checking and legal work. But ultimately, in some of the cases, certainly, it will be a case of the word of the person making the allegations against Brands, and he's vehemently denied any criminality here. Is it right that he should be unceremoniously cancelled by all these companies before we've really got to a conclusion on this? Well, my greatest surprise, quite frankly, is that he's been allowed to broadcast for as long as he has. Because if you look back at, you know, some of the quotes from his delightful memoir, My Bookie Work, mm. then you'll find extremely misogynistic, extremely unsavoury, and I would say in many cases alluding to uh, an issue on his part with what is and isn't consensual Well, it's interesting sex. you say that. So I, I found an interview I did with him in 2006, which is the same year, I think, that he was going out with a 16-year-old girl and picking her up from school. Um, and it was, a, it was a, a, a classic brand interview at the time where I asked for reasons that I'm not entirely sure other than it must have been jocular at the time, are you a more successful sexual predator now you don't drink? Now, I meant it as a joke. I didn't have any information about him actually being a sexual predator. He said, yes, but I resent the word predator. I like to think of myself as a conduit of natural forces. After all, the most natural thing in the world for people to do is to you know, uh, use the euphemism mm. for having sex. And people want to do it. He said, so all you have to do is remove all the reasons why women don't actually go through with it, like pride and reputation. You just have to unpick the conditions stopping women going straight to bed with you. And then he said this, to your point, I asked him if he was attracting more women since becoming a celebrity. He said, actually, all this changes. The amount of seduction required has decreased to almost preposterous proportions now I'm famous. I've always been good at pulling because I'm quite charming. But if I talked to 10 women in the old days, then I'd back myself to pull two or three. Now I wouldn't be happy with less than eight or nine. And whereas I would have devoted a lot of time to the seduction, depending on the quality of the target, now I just get on with it. Fame has been very helpful in that respect. Mm. Now, these are... Damning but I think Pierce, quotes, right? But, I mean, but, but, but that's a damning question as well, if you don't mind it me is. saying. Yeah. Because if you can say to him as a joke question, yeah. you're a more successful sexual I predator agree. now that you don't drink, I agree. then actually what it reflects mm. is a culture where it's acceptable to make jokes about things that are incredibly serious. I, I totally agree. And, and, I do... and, and that, for me, is the biggest issue with yeah. all of this. You know, if, if criminal proceedings uh, go ahead and if he's found mm. guilty, that's, that's a completely separate thing and I'm not in any mm. way qualified to talk about that but certainly as a woman who's been in the public eye for the last 35 years yeah. you know the the atmosphere mm. and the ability for people to use their power uh, and to promote themselves in a certain way and to discuss and laugh about things that really aren't funny I think began in the kind of mid 90s with all those lad magazines yeah I know. don't disagree and and it, of course we saw what happened with the thing with Jonathan Ross with Paul uh, with the young woman Georgina Bailey was on my show last night talking about the effect that had on her life um, Robert when I mean, he goes on to say he boasts endlessly about the number of women he's slept with and so on but he goes on to say that he uh, treats women as goddesses. He never wants to be misogynistic or 
aggressive towards women. He kind of qualifies it all, as he's often done, mm. leaving you sort of wondering, well, what is the real Russell Brand here? And maybe from these investigations, we are finding out the sinister reality, but maybe we're not. I mean, I do think if you believe in due process, if you believe in the law doing its job, it is too early to convict him. So, look, we'll, I'm sure, uh, contributors to your show, <laughs> peers believe in due process. But on the other hand, you know, there have been uh, more than rumours. It's been a sort of open secret in parts of the media for years. The, this, the, 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 this, this character uh, was seen by women who we'd had relationships with as abusive. Um, and, I mean, you know, my partner, Charlotte Edwards, wrote in The Standard a few years ago uh, about you know, what an appalling man he was in terms of his relationships with women. And she was responding, actually, curiously, uh, to a Sunday Times interview with him in which he'd said he'd become a great supporter of Me Too. And, I mean, this was a sort of... I mean, this was like an insult, really, but the, 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 there wasn't the outrage you would have expected. So, I mean, as many would say, yes, it's great that Channel 4 and the Sunday Times have done an important investigation about how some mm. an individual seems to have abused his power uh, uh, as a result of his fame. But you slightly ask yourself, why weren't they doing this year? You know, why, why was he being given respectability over many years? Why was the, inv the investigation, in a sense, so late? But, but also, um, more so, I mean, it's interesting, yeah. you know, that Charlotte writes this article, but actually, he's written far more yes. damning things well, yeah, including than in people this interview, have written yeah. about him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you look at these quotes from yeah. my bookie work, by my 20s, I would relish the challenge of chaste maids and the search for the correct combination of words required to decode their moral resistance, mm. the nobstacle course, I call it. You know, as I esco yeah. escorted McKay, a lap dancer who slapped him after sex through the front door. I felt very strongly that I needed to avenge the slap. I spat in her face. Mm. That's in his words, no, in his book. To totally. And what's in... I do think, you know, one of the things that all of the media, both from tabloid to uh, sort of broadsheet and indeed television, everybody has questions to answer here mm. because everybody lent him respectability in different or ways. Platform. You know, the, you know, I mean, the Newsnight <laughs> interview, uh, you know, where he's taken, you know, this is a man whose ideas are absurd, and yet, you know, the BBC gives him a platform as though he's some he great thinker. He was invited to Parliament um, to talk about you know, drug law. Well, Ed Miliband know, basically had him trying to get, prop up to, his, his to effort get, to be Prime Minister. Because there's, there's this ridiculous idea that somehow he has this connection with young people. The Guardian, the Guardian um, had him... I mean, Alan Rusbridge has been yeah. very pompous about this on Twitter and very highfalutin. He had him next to him in the Guardian editorial conference sitting next to Rusbridger, and basically dictating so, the, what so, was going to happen so, to the paper. So I think how you legitimise somebody, how you give them respectability, how you give them this cloak which allows them to do some really terrible... Th I think, you know, there are questions for everybody. Well, but, uh, let me bring, let me bring in Douglas. Other, though, go, go just, on. One yeah. other thing which I think is really, really important in all of this is that we have to look at our own culture mm. over the last two decades. And I feel so strongly that the proliferation of pornography, which mm. has been facilitated by the World Wide mm. Web, has turned, has normalised behaviour. I mean, we were joking about the 90s and, and what that was like, mm. but that was not aggressive and it wasn't anything to do with violence against women. What's become normalised amongst young people mm. who've got, had their sex education delivered to them no, through the that. internet without any kind of guidance is that this is normal behaviour, mm. that it is funny. I mean, if you listen to clips of him doing live performances where he's saying some of the vilest things I've ever heard, mm. you'll hear men and women laughing in the audience mm. because somehow we've well, he got a, he got a standing ovation on the day this all dropped that night on stage, which I right. found very disconcerting to watch. I mean, I would make the point which we made yesterday is that since the Me Too and Time's Up campaigns in particular, a lot of this stuff, looking back to the kind of banter as it was described at the time, you know, he won the Shagger of the Year award at the Sun three years running. Everyone thought that was funny, right? Mm. No one was as morally outraged as they are now. I do think that the moral uh, conviction of brand historically is pretty intense right now and probably perfectly justified. But I don't think but, but more... <coughs> is a crime, but no, I think that it... the way in which you humiliate and disparage people and the sorts of things that he's describing, yeah. that's not about promise. No, let me bring that's in... about a blatant disregard uh, of women. Let me bring in Douglas again. You. Douglas, <coughs> listen uh, patiently to this. I, I suppose the point about this is there is a theory, which we had a, a, a King's Council yesterday talking to us, that all this does, all this social media speculation, all the raging opinions on either side, 
they actually make it incredibly difficult for him ever to face a fair trial if he ever faced a trial at all. Therefore, justice itself doesn't get served. It gets damaged by this. That's another part of the equation. Well, look, it, 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 there's some truth in that. I just wanted to return to something that Robert said earlier, which is that, first of all, it was a sort of open secret in the media. Whenever the general public discover there's a sort of open secret in the media, the general public always ask, well, why did the media keep, keep it to itself? Yeah. And it's a perfectly legitimate question to yeah. ask. And the second question to ask, it's a point to make, if I may, is Robert said everyone enabled him. That's not true. I can give a list of the people who enabled him. The BBC, Channel 4, the Guardian that hosted him as a columnist as well as an attendee at editorial conferences, the New Statesman that made him the editor for one issue. And, I, so, and this is important because this was at the height of the allegations that were made against him. At this same time, if I may point out, uh, Charles Moore at The Telegraph and The Spectator pointed out that Russell Brand's behaviour was so abhorrent at the BBC that he would no longer pay the BBC licence fee. It was not the case that everyone fell for this charlatan. It was not the case that everyone thought he was God's gift and that he could swing an election. It was a very strange time on the British left, and it was the British left that enabled him now. And I could just make this one point. I don't want to be partisan about this because there's a non-partisan point, but... It is important to note that, as Russell Brand has, in my view, given himself cover by fleeing to this weird far-right conspiracy place, almost nobody on the right of the spectrum has welcomed him. I mean, The Telegraph is not giving him guest columns. He is not being invited into the editorial meetings of The Telegraph. There is some responsibility that the people who enabled him in Britain should take, instead of, as always, covering it wildly... OK. The, 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 sorry, but the, the, you can't make this a political thing. The government, government of the day, and not Labour, facilitated him and invited him to speak at, in Parliament about what should be drug policy in this country. Yes, How on crazy. earth he would have any sort of credibility in that sphere, I've no idea. The fact of the matter is that what we're dealing with is someone who is clearly a, a sex predator. Well, hang on. Possibly, and, 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 but, and, 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 and Piers pointed success. out the tabloids like the Sun thought he was a... Yeah, thought he was and a it's, funny. Hang on, hang on. it's the okay, fact but, that he can but, draw an audience Mary, listen, that's kept him in business, but you are, which is, which is you know, Mary, economic. You are calling him a sex predator. Well, he's a sex predator. He said it himself. I've got okay. four quotes all by him. I know. Which, which just, to me, it's instantly your, define yeah, him It's as your such. analysis of his on what he says. He would dispute that. He but you say, called him a sex predator. No, no, I did. Question, I did, but not, and he didn't mind that at all. I, well, he did. He objected immediately. He said, "I resent the word predator." Right. So he doesn't categorize. He says he was wildly promiscuous, loved sex with thousands of women, uh, but that's not a crime, right? The question is, has what he's done actually become criminality? The Sunday Times. Well, he has been accused. Four, he's been accused of rape. Yeah, he's been accused of crime. I painted but he hasn't been convicted and yet. begged until she kissed me. I lied and danced and evoked the spirit of Pan till reluctantly she removed her bra. I used tears and emotional blackmail to secure the immolation of her knickers. I mean, you know, I don't have to say anything, no, really. But I think he, it speaks for When did that book come out? It came out, I think, 2004. Right, so like but, but I don't remember any action being taken about the book, right? So... I, I, I don't even know who published it. I'm not right. an expert on but, Russell Brand. But, point, but I, I am an expert on sexism in society, and I don't think that you can call it an either right wing or a left wing or indeed a mainstream I, okay. or a non mainstream I, thing. I'm it's not everywhere. Here, I'm not going to defend Russell Brand. I want to see how this plays out. But there is one small No, no, no. I want to see how it plays out. There is one small point, just to pick up something that Douglas said. I was, you know, in terms of who may be, you know, right now one of the most absolutely most powerful people in the world, uh, definitely not on the left. Mm. Elon Musk, mm. you know, uh, said, you know, like the competition. No, 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 you know, no wonder they're coming after you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he has been endorsed by yeah. people of yeah, all shades, shall we say. Yeah, but I can think of a lot of rock stars. He's got Andrew Tate right behind him. No, no, but, but Marilyn, I mean, you and I first met in the music business when you were a music PR. There were lots of rock stars and pop stars who were behaving just like Russell Brand and yes. boasting about it. Morals but and the no one's saying he's unique. That's the, the tragedy. No, but, That's what I'm trying to but, say, but is but that wild, this is a cultural, societal what's, issue. What, I think what's changed, wild, brazen, boastful promiscuity by male celebrities used to be celebrated. Sure. It definitely isn't now. There's been a shift 
in yeah, the I way disagree. these are viewed but morally. Piers, there has but always been Tate, a line, though. And the, you know, there has Andrew always been line, a line. The line is sorry, criminality, sorry. yeah. Can we just look at Andrew Tate and, and his enormous success? Yeah. He boasts about his sexuality all the time. Yes. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not that it's I, a thing of the past. Yeah, it's like just, that, it's just that Russell Brand is the object of our ire at the moment. Mm. But what we're not doing is shifting the... the, 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 the whatever the expression is, mm. you know, we need to change the culture. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. If I may, very quickly, Piers. Very quickly. Um, there's one very quick point to make, if I may, which is that there, there's a question of due process here that you've rightly raised. And many people have been saying, well, how could the girls in question, the young women in question, get a fair trial? Mm. I think that's an, a, 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 an incredibly important point to raise. But one of the answers is how few rape accusations actually make it through, not just to trial and to conviction. And I would like to see in our society not just these high-profile celebrity-related cases going to trial and getting more success, but think of the hundreds of girls in places like Tell Telford who yeah, raped absolutely. in yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want equal justice across the yeah. board and not just on celebrity cases. Yeah, I totally agree. I think we can all agree on yeah, that. Yeah, well, I think we can um, agree. Robert, you've got a brilliant new thriller, The Crash. It's not the story of Russell brand, although it could be. Um, no, it got, couldn't be. And the mainstream media <laughs> on the back couldn't be more excited by this. You've quoted every paper saying it's the greatest book of all time. Give me a, a very quick summary of what this is. So it's a story about the crash, as it says. It's set in 2007, 2008, a story that um, I was sort of somewhat immersed in. Yeah. And it's basically about central character, a journalist at the BBC. I wonder where I got that idea from. Mm -hmm. um, so whose who, on-off <laughs> who's on -off girlfriend is found hanged in her flat. And the, uh, it's a story about the abuse of power by people at the top of big organisations, something we've just been talking about, yeah. and his quest to find out uh, why she died. Excellent. And he's taken all the sexy bits out on the advice. <laughs> no, no, there's quite a lot of sex. They just aren't sex scenes, as it were. It's a sort of... It's a, it's, there's, a, there's a nuance. There's a, there's a nuance. You knew where the line was. was. Say again? You knew where the line was. I knew where the line was. <laughs> well, certainly in terms of good taste, I knew where the line was. Robert, Mariana, thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, thank you to Douglas.